tasked to prove that this integral is always less than this quantity when r is positive, and always larger than this quantity when r is negative, and is equal to half pi when r is equal to zero. And we're going to prove these lemmas to help us to show the desired result. So first of all, the first lemma, let's look at the left-hand side function denoted as f of x equal to tangent to x minus x. What's its derivative? All right, that's 1 over cosine square x minus 1. So I want to look at when x is in between 0 and half pi. Is it positive or negative? Right? So if that's the case, then cosine square x, x is obviously strictly between 0 and 1. So 1 over cosine square is, of course, strictly larger than 1. So the whole thing is larger than 0. So when x is in between 0 and half pi. Right, so what is f of 0? So outside of this interval, if I plug 0 into it, that is equal to 0, of course. And I've also shown my derivative is strictly positive. Therefore, my original function is, of course, monotonically increasing over this open interval. Therefore, my function in this open interval is obviously strictly larger than f of 0. Right? I can easily show that my function is strictly larger than 0. Right, that's my desired result. And after I'm done with this, I'm going to show the second lemma. Sine x over x, denoted maybe as g of x. Right, also look at its derivative. And according to the formula, we have x squared. We have sine x derivative cosine x, cosine x times sine x minus derivative of x is 1 minus sine x. Right. Also, I want to show that the, uh, is it positive or negative? Right. So first of all, I've shown that the first lemma is true. Right. Tangent x minus x is always positive. In other words, I can just move x over. Right? Tangent x is larger than x right? in this uh, open interval. In other words, sine x over cosine x is larger than x. In other words, since in this open interval, therefore my bottom is always positive, then I can just say sine x is always larger than x times cosine x. Then I can move sine x over to the other side. x cosine x minus sine x is always negative right, in this open interval. Therefore, my top is really negative. Bottom is always positive in this open interval. Therefore, my overall fraction should be negative. In this open interval. Therefore, I can draw the conclusion my original function g of x is really monotonically decreasing. Decreasing. Therefore, what's outside of this interval? What is g of half pi? g of half pi. That is half, sine half pi, 1, 1 over half pi. Reciprocal of half pi, that is just 2 over pi. All right, since it's monotonically decreasing, therefore, outside of this point, my overall function is always strictly bigger than this quantity. All right? Then gx is really bigger than this quantity in this open interval. Right. So sine x over x is really larger than 
2 over pi, right? I'm done with the second lemma, so. Now I can just divide, multiply x. Right? x is already positive, I can multiply by x on both sides. Sine x is larger than 2x over pi. Right? So in other words, if I just, when r is positive, then I can multiply by both sides by minus r and change the direction. Change the direction. Minus 2rx over pi, in this case. Since e to the power of uh, x is increasing, therefore if I apply e to the minus r sine x should also be less than e to the power of minus 2rx over pi. And then I can apply the integral on both sides. From 0 to half pi, e to the power of minus r sine x dx is less than the integral from 0 to half pi, e to the power of minus 2rx over pi dx. What's the right hand side? What's its antiderivative? That is easily minus pi over 2r times e to the power of minus 2rx over pi. That's easily verifiable. And from 0 to half pi. I plug half pi into this, that is simply e to the power of minus r, plug 0 into it, and I have minus minus plus plus pi over 2r, right, that is essentially the uh, right hand side of my desired inequality after I factor out pi over 2r. So I'm done with the uh, with this part when r is positive. For the same reason, we can easily verify that this is also true when r is negative. Easily verifiable. When r is equal to zero, that's integral from zero to half pi of just dx. That's easily just half pi. So I'm done. So what's the motivation of using these lemmas? What's the motivation? You. You tell me in the comment.